It's time for the Gizwiz with Mads Mattis writer Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1677, recorded Thursday, May 24th, 2018. Just cool it! On this episode of the Gizwiz, we have three gadgets from three different shows, so a whole plethora of options for you. I have my final DIY gadget. Again, I know we said that last week, but we'll explain why. <laughs> and I take over the gadget warehouse. All next on The Gizwiz! It's the same show with Dickie D. And OMG chat on your PC. It's time for The Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness, geek disease. Under pathology. Rows and rows of USBs. Growing blue and LEDs. Get ready for The Gizwiz now. Now! Now! And here he is, the arbiter of gadgets, Dick D. Bartolo. How are you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good, sir. And you? Doing great. Getting ready for um, my trip next week. And then also this weekend, I'm participating in two charity live streams. So I'll be like... Wow, is streamers. one of them for the Gizwiz? Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Oh, okay. I mean, oh, although okay. we may be hospitalized <laughs> when it comes to the podcasting industry, uh, no, uh, unfortunately not. Um, oh, so, that's yeah. a, that's okay. That's okay. No, we were talking earlier, and, and this happened on my phone. So Chad called me as usual, and suddenly um, my mic has reverted to the mic in the computer and not my blackjack system and my Heil mic. I go to my camera, all the settings are grayed out. And I suddenly remembered, oh, there was a Microsoft update two days ago. Uh, and it's so frustrating. Whenever a, an application updates and then everything has changed and you don't have the, even on iOS, you can say, don't update. Unless I tell you to, okay? I'm, I'm going to turn off automatic updates. I just want to handle all of this. It's easier to do that on a mobile phone than it is on your computer and <laughs> PC. Because Skype will just take over and just update itself. It's so yes. frustrating. Exactly. And and then Verizon did the same thing with, with my cell phone. Although that it said, do you want to update? And I said yes, because I didn't know what uh, Android was uh, adding. And they added, a, they added one thing that's kind of neat is now I have an LG G6. The entire screen can be the picture. And then you, at the bottom, you make a little upward motion if you want to bring up the back key and the home button. But the, the, they, oh, they, so they like yeah. No buttons. No buttons, exactly. However, they they took all my apps and put them all over the place. <laughs> I had three pages of everything I use in the order I use them. They are over seven pages. Half of the pages are empty. It's <laughs> they go. I see your nicely organized pa organized pages. Let me just take those and sh shake them yeah, out. Yeah. There, go. <laughs> there you go. Here's your there apps. There you go. There you go. Oh, my That's gosh. Right. All right. Oh, so we're giving you something good, but while we're in here, let's move this camera app to page five. Okay. Yeah. You know, that uh, that's oh. hilarious. God, anyway. Um, uh, hey, we have a kind of a, a look back. Oh, on yeah, yes, we, we do. Talked about in the past. We do. Because I bought the $21 version of the selfie stick with the built in LED light. Yeah, Chad's showing you how bright it is. Very and bright. then you found it for like $14. 14. Yeah, $14. exactly. Yeah. And then there was, wasn't, was there a discount or was that the, the end price? I think that was the end price. The end uh, price. Okay. Had, uh, so I could not stand it that you had one that was cheaper than me. So I also went out and bought <laughs> the second one, uh, which was 13 something. And I found Dennis and I went over every single piece of the original versus the, this is, the, uh, let's see, this is the $21 one. And, uh, I, we compared it to the $13 one. There is one thing that we can find that's different. Bring yours up and tell me. Is your that the little twist knob? Uh huh. Is it is it flat on the outside edge, or is it flat on the inside edge? On the inside edge. Yes, that's so the it's only. Domed. 
<laughs> and this is re- this is reversed. And I'm thinking, that this, were they made in? The, what, yes, don't. Were they made and, and cut yours, to mine? Which is flat, right? Which is flat. <laughs> and I'm thinking, were they made in the same factory? And some people were picking them up and sticking them in. <laughs> This way, and Wait, but that's like people- a seven dollar difference. Do you want it? Do you want it curved, or do you want it flat? Isn't oh that a gosh. riot? That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. And and yours, um, I got mine in white. You got yours in white, and yours has a nice logo on the side, right? Yeah, mine says. Doesn't you have the name of the company? Mocrio. on it. Yes, and mine mine just has gibberish uh, on the side. Just you know all the. Oh yeah, I don't things. have any licensing information. This one's illegal. yeah, no, yeah. Wow, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, maybe it may be. Yeah. it's not licensed to be used in the United States. Yeah, um, I, I I assume they were made in the same factory. Maybe they ran out of those little clinky things and they switched to it. I don't know, but. Uh, we just showed that they are pretty much identical yeah. at a seven dollar. Like, like uh, that's that's like a thirty percent difference in price. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. One thing you that know, I do don't you find like, that your phone likes to pop out or, or do a you little know, bit. Find that, and yes. then also they have these like flip out uh, holders, which I yes. really dislike. Is that this bottom? Dennis piece, hates them. Yes, and so what I'll do is I'll. I'll put the phone in here, slide it up, and it'll end up closing itself. So I end up resting it on this. It just gets, like, I mean, you can just see, as, as you push it up, that gets, well, my hand's in the way. Um, but, oh, I'm getting a... Oh. Yes, I know, I know exactly. Calling what was that? I was calling 911. We don't oh want to do that. Oh, my God. Um, but, yeah, basically, just that uh, as as you slide it in, it, pushes, it closes that. It closes this. So you have to kind of yes. like use your thumb down there, and then, and then it's finally clamped in, into place. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah anyway, not, not the best. I don't understand. Dim in the place. Shh, song. shh, shh, shh. <laughs> There we go. Okay. Well, that is the selfie stick. Um, and you know, I'm happy with it. I'm. I'm probably yeah, gonna no, take they're, it. Yeah. They're, they're, they're nicely built. Yeah. yeah they're for not, sure. They're nicely made. Well, we have a jam pack um, episode today. We do, we do. So uh, I will start. So yesterday, actually a week ago, if you're watching this uh, after we've recorded it, uh, Asa had their global press conference at Lincoln Center, a big event with hundreds of people. And um, they introduced uh, new gaming computers, new monitors, new laptops. But I, I especially liked looking at the Chromebooks, which they introduced some very different kind of Chromebooks. So we'll do a little bit of that, and then you'll hear the uh, CEO of uh, Asa talk about it, too. The whole thing is just three minutes. Here we go. So we're at the Acer event called Next at Acer, and this is the fall lineup of their new laptops. These are their new Chromebooks. These are beautiful. Look at these two big up-facing speakers, 13 hours of battery life. Also, notice on the screen, every one of them has oh, wow. the Gizwiz, uh, TV screen on it. Uh, took Dennis and I almost two hours to run around and do that. <laughs> okay. and, and they kept changing them back to the Acer screen. Uh, <laughs> also, the touchpad is Gorilla Glass, so that the movement of the cursor is way easier. Now, I'm going to resort to some other video from Acer so we can get some more details on Do we have on Chrome? So, you, know, we've had, you mentioned we've had great success with Chrome, and we have, and I'm excited to talk about this new product because this is the new Chromebook Spin 13. It's a convertible device, as you can see, but it's also the world's most powerful Chromebook. It's the first to market with the 8th generation Intel Core series of processors. Wait, so this is uh, Intel Core Core i5. That's right. Powerful processor. World's most powerful Chromebook on the market. Wow. So it has, with all that power, we couldn't just say, well, that's good enough. We needed to make sure it's stylish as well. Pay attention to how it looks. So it's an all-metal design. Uh, It's 360 degrees. 360 degrees with the dual torque hinge. And we want to step further and included Corning Gorilla Glass on the touchpad. Wait, so the touchpad is a glass. 
It, it's colony glass. It's durable and silky smooth. Wow. So this is an incredible new device. I love it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Eric. <laughs> Chromebook is an important device for us, but today we have a spatial, spatial device that we also want to show to you based on Chrome. That's a Chromebook Tab 10. The tablet based on Chrome. Eric, tell us more about this one. So this is a really fun product, uh, in large part because of the Chrome operating system and its ability for Google Expeditions AR, for augmented reality. So in a school environment, it really comes alive. It brings the, the session alive. Imagine chemistry and mixing chemicals without being worried about spilling and, and burning anything. Uh, lower cost for running the classroom as well. It's also easy to manage because of the Google Management Console. Uh -huh. So all those Chromebooks we've just deployed into schools now, everybody knows how to set up. You can do the same thing here. And as you're finding right there, it's a pen come we said. So this has a Wacom EMR pen for interacting with the screen. It's included with the device and it's got great precision. That sounds wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for our new device, the tablet based on Chrome. Interesting. Very cool. Yeah, so they are actually, uh, we didn't see them there, but they, they're they coming out with a business line of oh, Chromebooks. Oh, did I stop it too early? Oh, no, no, no. no, no okay. I, I wanted to go out there. I wanted to okay, go out cool. there. So, so they're going to be having the i3, i5 chips. Then you can uh, select memory up to, I think, 256 gigabytes. Wow. So, yeah, I know. I know. So it's the eighth generation Intel chips. This is in the business business market one. And there's going to be a Chromebook spin. Oh, that's good. You have to go down there. They, uh, the new products keep showing up. Uh, so they claim that it's, it, so they now have the first uh, Chromebook with a 360 hinge. They have the first Chromebook tablet. They have the, the most powerful Chromebook made with the uh, uh, eighth generation chip. Intel yeah. chips. Yeah. And uh, you can get up to 16 gigabytes of RAM on, on some of the uh, Chromebooks. So it's like a whole new world. For, That's so and cool. I, I, I happen to like Chromebooks. Do yeah, you have no, one? Me too. No, I, I, I love it that you just open. Yeah, I, I uh, love it. You just open the lid and, <laughs> and you're it's there. there. Yeah, it's exactly. there. It's there. It doesn't go. Oh, let me see. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And, I, and then I also just love that it's you know school schools tend to be taking on Chromebooks you know really really um, effectively. And a tablet makes so much sense. A Chromebook tablet, I've never even thought of something like that. That makes so, so, so much sense. Um, so yeah, I think it's just, I think it's just perfect, really. Um, you know, yeah. And mo and most of them have have the Wacom uh, pen oh, yeah, built the Wacom in. Wacom pen, like Wacom is like the standard. For yes. pen technology. I mean, that is fantastic that they have Wacom pins inside of them. Another nice thing about Wacom pins is you don't need to uh, charge the, the pin. You don't need to uh, put an extra battery into the pin. Um, it's just a, it's a total uh, uh, non-electronic magic. using it's device. Magical. It's magic. It's magic. Yeah, that's exactly how you say it. Yeah, so that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and I also some... like the price point. And that's another reason I like them for schools, because it's like schools have the choice of iPads, which are pretty expensive. That's a pretty expensive electronic. Yeah, piece. I think I think the uh, the tablet is three twenty nine or three thirty nine. Yeah, that's great. And being released uh, initially into the education market, I believe that they're getting them out now for back to school. So they'll be shipping in uh, June and July. Although. I did look on, on uh, I think Newegg had one of them there. I don't know if they're shipping yet. Hmm. But if you really, really want one, search around, and I'm sure you can find one. Very cool. Uh, all right, so that's new from Asa. Okay, now, we a couple of weeks ago, we did some stuff from Time to Play magazine. Uh, but there was a gadget that was not a toy that I thought people might be interested in because it's really something kind of different for new moms so let's take a look 
Time to play magazine spring event. Now, before you can play with toys, you have to be a baby that grows up. But we're going to talk about the baby, and we're going to talk about a company called The First Years. That's right. And what is this guy? So this is The First Years 4-in-1 Remote Control Bottle Warmer. And this is a great little device here because we all know how much moms need sleep and we love sleep. So what we've done, we've created this bottle warmer where you take off the top before you go to bed and then you put your bottle with either breast milk or formula inside the bottle warmer. You're gonna go ahead and cover it back up and it's gonna stay, whoops, it'll stay chilled overnight. Now when baby starts crying in the night, you're gonna have this remote control little button on your bedside table. You're gonna press this button, it will light up, and then that lets you know that the bottle is heating downstairs in the kitchen. So you can stay in bed, get extra sleep while your bottle warms up, and then when it's ready, you can feed baby and head right back to sleep. Uh, you know, I know nothing about baby bottles. How long does it take a baby bottle to warm up? So it varies. Typically, it can take a couple minutes, um, up to 10 minutes. There's actually a little tray in here that tells you exactly what time you need. Um, it's based on like the number of ounces, the type of formula or breast milk being used. So it tells you everything you need to know, how much time is required to heat up so that it's nice and easy for mom to go ahead and program. Okay, now I know that there was no power at this booth. So is this normally AC powered? Um, it typically just plugs into the wall, so yes. Okay, and then the remote button is battery operated? That is correct. Battery. battery powered, that's right. And it lights up so that you know that it's actually working. Okay, and the price uh, for the system? So it's $75, $74.99, and you can buy it at any mass retailer. It's available now at Target, it's available at Walmart, Amazon, Bye Bye Baby. And it's called the 4-in-1 remote? That's right, the first year's 4-in-1 remote control bottle warmer. I like it. If it was working, I would sample some of the milk. <laughs> Dicky Bartolo, Mads Metis, Rider in the Gizwiz. One take fit here at gizwiz.tv. Bye. <laughs> you know, it could be used for adults, too. You know, I like some warm uh, milk before going to uh, bed. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> uh, probably not enough to make hot chocolate, uh, right. but... Yeah, and also you can wa just warm baby food in it too if you want. Uh, she said seventy four ninety nine, and I did a little web search, and I see it's at Target for sixty two ninety nine. That is a darn good price. I, I am so used to every single baby product costing two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, it is. It is a right, isn't it? Uh, let's see. I think we did the thing from. Uh, Oh, it's a big company. I even forget who it was. Oh, yeah, I think it was the company that makes pods, not Carrick, but Nest Nest Cafe, uh, whatever it was. Yeah. They yeah. had a, a bottle warmer. I think it was one hundred ninety nine dollars. <laughs> yeah, I'm so used to that price. Anything, <laughs> yeah. anything with babies, it's like, oh, it's a two hundred dollar purchase. Um, that is a fantastic price, and and I'm sure that you could use it to warm whiskey or, you know, maybe some uh, some you know autumn. Spirits? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> that that is awesome. That is just yeah, it's, it's clever that you don't I have to get it. out of bed to start. That you know you can hit the button and but the longest I think is ten minutes for the bottle to be warm. But uh, you hit the button and at least you can get your bathrobe, <laughs> throw some water on your face, and know this that by the time. This mom is really sleeping in. <laughs> I mean, it is bright daylight outside. Yes, Jeez, that is mom. funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they said, "Well, we, yeah, we want to see what we want to see the device really clear." Yeah. Now it's not refrigerated, so what you do is you throw some uh, cold water or ice cubes in uh, two little bottles that are inside the unit. Uh, oh, gotcha. So it doesn't that's what those are. cool. Yeah, that's what they are. Got it. It doesn't cool, but it does heat. Got so, it. Yeah, I, um, I thought it was something something different. Yeah, I, I think that's fantastic. I mean, basically, this is a Keurig for a baby. Um, oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's how they should have branded it. In yeah. fact, they should have reached out to Keurig. Yes, um, that's it. That's it. That's a great. That's a great gadget. Love it. It's a first fun gadget. year's four in one remote control baby warmer. Baby baby oh. warmer. <laughs> Bottle warmer. <laughs>
<laughs> Unless you have a really <laughs> tiny baby, that's exactly. not going to work. Right. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, okay. And then we had Tech Day. Now, Tech Day, I found a device for podcasters Ooh. or podcaster wannabes. Like and us. It's like us. <laughs> that's it. And this is it. We're at Tech Day. It is amazing. Every year it grows by leaps and bounds. And we're talking, you know, we're podcasters, your podcasters, a lot of our audience are podcasters. But is anybody a padcaster? All right. That's the sign that attracted us. And Josh here is going to tell us about, did you invent this? I did invent this. By the way, I'm going to swap out this rig with one of ours, and then you, it's going to make, make your video that much better instantly. Wait a minute. A better video? I don't think we're up for that, but we'll we'll see. All right, no, so tell me about podcast. Okay, so we started the company geez, year, about maybe the week after the iPad 2 came out. It was the first one that had a camera in it. And as much as I hated the first iPad, I saw the camera in the second generation. I said, well, you can shoot video. iMovie's on the iPad already, so you can edit video. And with a data plan, you can upload it from basically wherever you are. Nothing had really you know, solved that problem yet. So I tried shooting videos like what you're doing right now, uploaded them from the place where I was doing it, and people were like, that doesn't make any sense. You, it's impossible. And I said, no, it's right here. And so I built this rig to essentially treat the iPad more like a conventional piece of camera equipment. Oh All right, so we gosh. have an i. Which iPad model is in here? This is an iPad Pro 9.7, so it's actually by Apple standards There's a considered old. on it, um, but it shoots yes. 4K video. You can live stream from it. You can edit on it, um, and we can. You know, we basically gave it external microphones, lighting, better sound capabilities, support capabilities, and it turns it into you know professional rig. Now this interface here allows you to do multi-camera live streaming. So imagine you want to stream to Facebook using three or four mobile devices on the same network. You can go right there. This gentleman right here is live Wait a to minute. Facebook. Three or four mobile devices. You have more than one phone? So if you have up to six iPads or iPhones, oh, oh. you can connect them all in this timeline and just switch. So you can go to close up, to close up, to close up. I do panel discussions. Oh, in other words, each iPad is a camera. Each iPad is a camera. A and this is the control room. Remotely. This is the control surface, but it's also camera one. Uh, amazing. And now, now, are you selling the tripod too? Everything. Everything's ours. We can support it better if we don't have to tell a customer that's not ours go call the manufacturer. So now we're, we make everything that we sell, we support it 100%. You know, I saw a mini teleprompter on the front. Show us that. So this is our, our sort of like our newest favorite toy. So any old iPhone or iPod touch laying around or Android phone, you can load text into it. And then the reward you get for not, having, not memorizing anything is you get to basically look directly at the lens. So the result is you're essentially looking right at your audience. Oh, so this is like a regular teleprompter at ABC. It's a two-way mirror. Imagine a real teleprompter. You stuck it in the dryer. You get that. <laughs> and we're making one for iPads also that's a little bit larger that folds flat and totally portable. Now, what is the system cost and what's in the system? So the, tab the Padcast, this is called the Ultimate Studio. Ultimate Studio. Yes, this is the one we sell to education all the time. They don't want to have to buy anything after they buy the product. It's very difficult for them to get another you know, budget, another purchase order. So we said, all right, well, we'll put everything you could possibly need together. With wheels, tripod, headphones, three microphones, teleprompter, light, the whole thing, and it's $12.99 for the whole kit and caboodle. That is really amazing. Uh, Josh not included. Josh <laughs> optional. What's that? I said Josh is optional. <laughs> I'll come with it. I'm, well, I'm also tech. I'm not just the owner. I'm also tech support. Oh, my gosh. All guys. right. And it's available now? This has been available for quite some time. Our new product, which is uh, the Padcaster Verse, it's for smartphones. So it'll fit any phone of any size. So I'm going to give to you guys when you leave today. Um, and it just allows you to, you to use the teleprompter with your phone also. Um, this is a, it's a little pistol grip, but it's also a tripod and a battery bank. So you can charge your phone with it in the field. So. <laughs> uh, how big is the battery in there? About 3,200. Wow, that's, that's, that's pretty good, yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, this is our new thing. We figured this was more of like the tech day product. More people using phones here than I would imagine are using tablets. But it's new. We just launched it uh, April, beginning of April. So okay. we're kind of excited about it. It's great. And finally, is it podcaster.com? Well, it's padcaster.com. Okay. 
but Padcaster. Trust me, everyone's going to autocorrect this podcaster.com. <laughs> but yeah, just Google Padcaster, you'll find us. It's okay, easy. that's really great. I like this. This is everybody now is a podcaster. Before we think we had a a lot of competition. Now everybody here can be a podcaster. That's bad news for us. Although no one has the low quality that we ensure. <laughs> nice. We guarantee it. We guarantee See, yes, the exactly. Low yes. Other people just are bad. We guarantee the. Yes. The, oh my God. This no, is I, I was too. Incredible. I was too embarrassed to ask, even though it's twice during it. He said, "And this is what you're going home with." Yeah. Uh, like, uh, we uh, we we went home with my. I went home with my LED uh, tripod. <laughs> there you go. Which is fine. That that's fine. That is so it's, crazy. It, I love this. I'm just been looking all over their website. You know what? I I, I was on their website and the twelve ninety nine. It's basically thirteen hundred. Yeah. Uh, it, it 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 comes with the green screen, the yeah. the case, the wide angle lens, LED light, uh, unidirectional mic with a holder a, and three headphones. Of them. A stick I mean, mic, a lavalier mic, an audio splitter, the tripod, a green screen, the mini teleprompter, a backpack. I mean, it, it's a lavalier. Oh, my gosh. I, the, the teleprompter is just, gosh darn adorable, in fact. It, isn't it? Yeah. Oh so you, 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 you supply the phone, you know, for the teleprompter. Yeah. And obviously the the iPad for uh, the Ultimate Studio, but like you said, instead of running around trying to buy all this stuff, especially as he said, if you're a corporation or a school and you want to have a quickie mini studio, uh, this is a great way to do it. Uh, yeah. Everything in one backpack. This is uh, this is pretty cool, and and I and yes, this is a pretty expensive price, but there's a lot of other options. Like that has absolutely everything. Um, uh, this one, the Padcaster kit, uh, doesn't. Yes, come, you can buy. You can yes, you can buy smaller kits. Yeah, you can buy way smaller kits. I mean, just that uh, iPad case that has the a tripod mount on the back bottom and and the hot shoe mounts. I mean, this is just. So much stuff. This is really, really cool. Wow. Um, I mean, they have backpacks. They have everything. The, the, the everything, yes. And and it's padcaster.com. Padcaster. Yeah, so oh. be careful. He said he said, autocorrect might tr try to send you to podcaster. <laughs> you don't want that. No. Padcaster. Padcaster. Like a m iPad. Yes, really, sure. really incredible. That is... Uh, that is neat. I've never, I mean, that looks like the future, basically, is what. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, that's, that's what, uh, you know, reporters in the future are going to look like. They're going to have an itty bitty teleprompter um, and everything connected. You know, why, why do you need extra things? No, it's all right there. I'm really curious about the multiple camera switching. Is that all wireless? Can you do that wired? Oh, like, the, yeah, I'm you know, so I don't know. I don't know. But you know what was interesting? I, I saw it at CES and I saw it at the ASA event. I thought Dennis and I had gotten it down to just this, my phone and a microphone and, and the two of us. There are a lot of people now who do everything themselves. Oh, they, yeah. They, oh, they, have you done that yourself? Wait, they set the phone up. Then yeah. they walk around, they, they do the whole interview to the phone. Uh, yeah. I thought it, it Yeah, they're, they're like, just, they have, they have the mic, and then there's no person behind the camera. It's just a tripod. Um, yes. And they're just sitting there talking to the camera. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I've had to do that before, for sure. Like, oh, have you I done that? Oh. Conventions, and I just don't have a cameraman, so we just set up a tripod and get on the other side of it and talk. Um, yeah, I've definitely had to do that. It's not very fun because you look weird doing it. But Yeah, a little bit. It's sort of like, do. why doesn't the cameraman move in on him? And, <laughs> and why, well, why does they have a close-up? He's holding something. Why isn't yeah. the cameraman moving in? It's definitely because hard to do stuff Because there is no live. cameraman. Yeah, there yeah. is no cameraman. And so oh, like, if you want to you know, go in and get a, a tight shot, you have to get it afterwards and then edit all together, and it's a whole lot more work. So... It's way nicer to have someone there for sure. Yeah. But uh, that is incredibly P Padcaster, um, Padcaster.com. Dot com. Find out more. Yeah, yeah, that's great. 
Okay, that. so now, oh yeah, we should explain that yes. we are taping this before the end of May, and we sort of have an unwritten rule that right. if we're recording in a month, the gadget right. uh, is in that month. And even in the past, we had uh, stuff happen on the last day of the month, and if the episode went up on the first day of the month, um, we'd still keep to the theme, uh, even if we weren't recording like a week early. And that's how the schedule would be if, uh, if we had recorded on time, not early. So we're going to stick to DIY month for my crappy corner. So Cut. I'll be right back. Oh, you know what? I Ladies and gentlemen, it's, 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 it's coming. It's, it's time for... Yo, you don't need it, but oh, you might ha- want it at check. <laughs> It's uh, Crappy uh, Corner. Get it. Okay. Oh, Here it is. Oh, you got a podcaster kit. <laughs> this is my own podcaster uh, that I built myself. Whoa. Um, so this is a this is probably the funnest DIY thing I've made so far. Um, I'm not really even going to introduce it all that much. I'll let me myself introduce it uh, in the video. Air-conditioned toilet. Can we play What the Heck Is It? You know what? You can play what the heck is. Okay, you think it's an air-conditioned toilet. You are pretty darn close. No, it, it, it's, it's got to be... Oh, is it a do-it-yourself air conditioner? Yeah, it is. Yeah, you got it. You got oh, it. Okay. okay, so let's take it away. Hey, DGD, so we are back with another DIY gadget. This one is totally homemade. And we are going to be making a portable air conditioning unit for like maybe if you're out at a soccer game or your house doesn't have a great AC, I don't know why you would make a portable AC unit, but this is how you do it. Um, and we're gonna be using a styrofoam uh, ice cooler type thing, a little fan. I just both bought both of these at Walmart uh, for under $15 and a few PVC pieces in order to pull this off. And then also some frozen water bottles and some frozen uh, chilling uh, devices. So the first step after you have all of your pieces and the pieces that I have are just some right angle PVC pipe. I also have a connector to fit into the bottom of this and then another connector to screw onto the bottom so that uh, it will stay inside of the cooler. Um, but the first step is to take our little fan. This is only a four inch fan. Uh, you can also use a six inch fan and pull off this front grate right here just with the, uh, with the, the screws on the side. So let me pull that off. Okay, so I got the front grill off. This is an easy way to sort of trace where we need to cut. This first is just to uh, get the idea and we're going to cut a little bit inside of this trace so that the fan doesn't fall in. And uh, I am not just coming up with all of these, uh, this design myself. Uh, I did find a good little tutorial online. So now we are going to cut in to the styrofoam a little bit more inside of the diameter so that the fan doesn't fall in. So I'll be right back. Okay, so this piece has been removed and the fan just kind of sits inside of there. I did kind of go around the edge to bevel that edge so that it fits nice and snug. Now on the online design, uh, it doesn't have these cup holders. The next step is for you to add these angle brackets inside of here uh, or really anywhere you can, uh, a little bit further away from the fan. So I'm gonna dig in to these to be able to uh, place in my angle brackets. And then I'm also going to cut circles for these guys to fit in there too. Okay, so I have removed these portions and uh, I cut some holes. Now these are actually, I I assumed that I was gonna thread this from the other side, but after just shoving them in, they're uh, pretty stable uh, just all on their own. So I can just take these, drop them right on, and I can even direct them. Uh, so you, you could have like two flows of AC, you know, if you have two people in a car without AC, uh, it might work. So now the only step uh, left is to open this bad boy up and fill it with some cold stuff and get rid of all this old styrofoam. Uh, so let me go grab a few things. 
So you can really add anything in here. We got some frozen water bottles uh, that I've had in the freezer for a little while. They're not 100% frozen, uh, but they're, they're pretty good. Uh, also an ice pack that I had around, but you could also just throw in some ice. Okay, so it's all together. I plugged it in and you just turn it on. It's not too loud. And it is definitely cold air. It is 100% cold air for sure coming out of this thing. Uh, so just to kind of test this out, I have an instant read thermometer. Right now it says that it is 75 degrees inside of my house. I like to keep it a little warm. So it's kind of hot, saving some AC. So let's go ahead and put this in here. Uh, and I'm just gonna kind of rest it right on the, the opening there. And you can see it going down. It might take a little while for it to go down. Um, well, it's going pretty fast. Wow. So um, I'll cut forward to when uh, when cow. it finally kind of settles down. Okay, you so this is about where it's settled. It's bite. gone between 54, Whoa. 55, and 56. Oh, and we just got down to 53. That's the coldest it's been so far. <laughs> so it absolutely works. And just kind of standing next to it, <laughs> I can tell that it's it's gotten cooler uh, in this area. So it's it's effective. It definitely is effective at chilling the air, pushing it through. Um, going from 75 to 54 is actually really, really, really uh, a good, good way. Now, who knows how efficient it is because we had to first uh, chill down uh, the stuff inside through a, uh, through a refrigerator freezer. But this absolutely works. Um, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. Also, it's just like kind of... Yeah. I mean, it's not a super powerful um, air force. It's just kind of like a breeze. Um, but if you got a bigger, more powerful fan, I could also see how it would really improve things. This is only just a four inch fan. So our DIY AC unit with, <laughs> with movable uh, airflow works just great. Okay, so that's it. That, that's it. Um, and once again, it really isn't that powerful of 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 wind, it, it you know you but you could extend that with a better fan, a better way to push the Dude, air. Do you know how long it it put out cool air before so, like the ice melted? What's funny is um, now I didn't have it running the whole time, but okay. uh, I recorded that video four hours ago. And there's oh. still ice inside. Wow. So, and there's still, my water bottles are a little bit less frozen. Um, but they're, but it's still pretty frozen uh, together. And this, this solid piece that I had um, inside is still very much together. It's a little overblown, so you can't see inside there. But, but yeah, I mean, I could see that this could last for a few hours. Um, now, I only ran it for probably 40 minutes before I turned it off. But uh, it just sitting idle. Did it? The ice is still all in here. Um, you know, t t tell me again, what prompted you? D did you see this? The plans for this online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, let me show you um, what I found. This is Lady Lee's home, and this was oh, the oh, tutorial oh. that I was I was looking at. And so you can see there, theirs is a little bit different of a of a unit. Um, and they also got a six inch fan instead of a four inch fan. So that is a little bit of a difference. Oh, hello. Um, and so that's, you know. I oh, just okay, that's along. great. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so yeah. we'll put that link in the show notes. Exactly, exactly. Well, yeah, that, yeah. Exactly. And, oh, and nuclear this... reactor, you're gonna build that next? <laughs> next, yes, that's next. Okay. Um, and so this is, this is just a frozen gallon. It looks like just a single bottle, but it's just a really large bottle. Um, that's a frozen gallon of water, and that's what uh, they were using. But, um, I, I, and, and to be honest, $20 is pretty darn close. Um, the, the actual styrofoam, I could really only find one for about $10. The uh, fan, that was $5. And there was another, there was a $10 fan that was the larger size, the six inch size, but I was trying to keep, uh, cause I remember her saying $20 and I was thinking, I'm already at a lot. Um, and then these were super inexpensive. These were just a few uh, cents, like maybe $3 for all the PVC um, at Lowe's. So it was really inexpensive 
And and also it was pretty quiet. I was actually pretty surprised. You know, it is, it is. It was, I like the sound. Actually, the sound that? sounds like it's a, an air conditioner. <laughs> it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. So there you go. And it even has a handle, so you can move it yeah, around. That's right. Now, now you realize. Use case. At, go ahead. I was going to say uh, in the Manhattan uh, hardware store, uh, the air conditioner would come out cheaper <laughs> than yeah. yeah than the fan and the ice chest. <laughs> And the PVC. And the, I mean, that's really the where they get you. Yeah, exactly. the ice also. I mean, woo. <laughs> yeah, holy that's cow. Right. Um, now, places where you would actually use this, if you happen to have a house that just can't put an AC unit in, and you have a small enough room that that small of a fan is going to move air around it. I mean, you'd have to have almost like a closet <laughs> to <laughs> to make sure that you really cool down the room. Um, Either that or it'd just be sitting next to you and blow directly onto you is really the only other. But you know what? If if the kids were out in the country or something, I think that would be an ideal project that they would love that they were going to build their own air conditioner. I think it's great fun. If you were camping and there was a a power plug nearby or you had a battery-powered fan, it'd be perfect. It's great, yeah. I I like it. Awesome. That That is now. I know we said last week it was the end of DIY, but that is now. The end Officially. of DIY. The official <laughs> stamp has fallen. Um, that is the end of DIY. Uh, we'll have a, 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 a poll up for our patrons for next month's theme. You, th- you like that, Waffles? With that, let's move on to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. They're geeky and they're goofy. Together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play in Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Foghorn. And now it's actually Chad's Gadget Warehouse. I took over the warehouse this week, so here is my video. Hello, and oh, welcome great. to Chad's Gadget Warehouse. Uh, this gadget was actually given to me as a gift for Christmas, and unfortunately, I think it was for my parents even, so mom, I'm sorry if you're watching this, um, <laughs> and I actually never opened it. Um, this was made in, I can tell because it says copyright at the bottom, copyright 2012, so this is six years old uh, at this point. Before tracker, before tile, this is an electronic key finder. So for the first time, let's open this bad boy up and, uh, and look at it. Inside, you have a base station for your remote. You have number one and number two key fobs. And it also includes, wow, four, four uh, CR2032 batteries. Um, and oh good, here, here are the instructions inside of here. So I need to make sure, I need to plug it all in and, and see if it works. Uh, there's a kind of a thumb portion right here to see if I can pull this back off. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm afraid I'm gonna hurt my. Use yeah, a, don't a blade break your nail. To kind of get in there. Later, I found out you just slide it down. Oh my gosh, oh. <laughs> you cannot open this. There we go, finally. Okay. Um, Okay, so this takes two AAA batteries. I happen to have those right here. One and two. And then let's see, how do we open? Did we just do this? We just turn it, apparently. Or maybe not. Yeah, open this way. There we go. Ooh, okay. So there is one battery. We put the plus on this side. Nice, so we heard a beep, 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 okay. That's one battery together. Not exactly sure how we're gonna lock this. Okay, there we go. There you go, perfect. The other battery, there's a, a slight, slight thing that says open, so that's how I know uh, which way to turn it. I turned it, but it doesn't wanna open. There we go. Another battery, it's nice that they gave you four of these things. Here we go. Oh, that did not sound, that did not sound like it worked out. Uh, I might have to replace this one. Oh my gosh. 
The first issue, how on earth do you replace yeah, this? Yeah, you have to push it out with like a, a tiny a screwdriver. to kind of push this battery out. Oh my gosh, that is difficult. Okay. <laughs> there goes that battery. <laughs> okay, that battery sounded dead. Let's see if this one sounds any better. Uh-oh. There we go. Oh, there okay, you go. So nice. Now we have both trackers together. I guess I can't use the brand name, brand name tracker. That would be that would be bad. Okay, so both of those are connected and then of course you would connect them to uh, your keys. Now we can slap back on this thing and test them out. Hitting number one. <laughs> hmm. Okay, number two. <laughs> did, I, did I miss something? What on earth? Okay, maybe my AAA batteries are dead, but I'd, I'd highly uh, doubt that. Um, hmm. I think this just might be a dead, a dead, a dead gadget. Well, you know, they don't always work in the gadget warehouse. Um, you kind of heard how loud they were. They weren't actually that loud. I would say a tile or a tracker would be actually louder uh, than them. But the other th funny thing is just how large all of this is. I mean, the tracker and the tile can basically fit into a wallet. Uh, this is humongous. I mean, it's just, it's like five quarters stacked on top of each other. And then this thing, I mean, this is like the size of the original iPod. Uh, this thing is humongous. So. Uh, all in all, that is my gadget warehouse, and I, I love the weighted, you know, you just keep this on the counter all the time. It's just such a stylish piece of <laughs> art, really. Uh, that is it for this gadget warehouse. You can see that back in the day, this cost $20, $20 uh, for wow. the uh, key finder, and it was already uh, made to be a gift. Look at that, gift, get gifty and nifty. There you go, six-year-old key tracker from the Chad's Gadget Warehouse. All <laughs> okay, right, so. it was more like sappy and crappy. <laughs> sappy and crappy, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's how you should have described it. I actually found it online, too. They oh my are gosh. still available. Uh, $25, $26. Oh, my God. Oh, one customer review. One, yeah, but they it liked it. They, yeah, it was pretty okay. Um, oh, yeah, Emerson, I'm, okay. I'm a little sad that it didn't work for me. Um, after all these years. But well, you know, you didn't have a key on it, so I figured, <laughs> why bother ringing? It said, no, there there's go. no key. Yeah, it, there's it's, no key. it's I'm, that I'm not gonna... advanced. <laughs> it's a, there's a little camera in there that looked out and said, there's no key. I'm not wasting my time. Now, <laughs> the, I mean, obviously the big competitor right now would be Tile, and you can get a Tile, you can get a four-pack of Tiles for 50 bucks. So, uh, you know, that's like, I guess it's about the same price because you get two, tra two of those tracker things for 25 or 20 back in the day. Um, and so for 50, it's, it kind of works out to 12. Yeah, you know, but, but 12 Tile something. uses your phone that you have with you all the time, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And it would use Bluetooth LE. Um, so it would be available a lot more often. The battery lasts for years. Who knows how long that CR32, CR2032 would last. Um, and then on top of that, if you lose your tile or tracker, you can use the network of all the people to find your item uh, if, if it gets lost. So I would say tracker or tile is definitely still the yeah. better option. You know, which of the opinion. two of them, one of them has a non-replaceable battery and one right. has... Which, which, do you know which is which? The tile is non-replaceable. Oh, okay. They have a replacement program where you get like 20% off the next purchase. Uh, Tracker has a replaceable battery. And Tracker was the company that really, really impressed us. To, I think it was about two Oh, it's CES. Yes, yes, yeah. that's right. Um, but some of those products that we saw at CES never came out. One of the things that I was actually really, really excited about was their credit card-sized Tracker which you just can't buy still. It's, it seems to be vaporware. Um, and so I still think Tracker is the better of the two because of that replaceable user, replaceable battery. Um, and also it has uh, uh, echo support so that you can ask 
um, your Echo f to, to find your tracker, which is kind of nice because sometimes I can't even find my phone. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, the Echo is just sitting there. So I just say, hey, use, use tracker to find my phone or use tracker to find my keys. Um, or I use tracker to find my phone and then my phone to find my keys. Um, so that all, you know, that's nice too. Um, it's a, kick, a Kickstarter wear. Okay, I, I tried to look for this. I haven't looked for it uh, recently, the, the tracker um, credit card. Um, but yeah, but yeah my experience like has been when they make them small, the sound they right. admit is, is so also small. Yeah, tiny. Yeah. And, and um, so it, it's sort of like they haven't gotten to the point where they can get something loud and still put it in a small package. Yeah. Yeah, see, this is interesting. The, the wallet tracker is, is, is just a normal wallet with a tracker in it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not what I wanted. No, what you have to do is get a bigger wallet so the tracker looks smaller in it. That's the that key. That wouldn't work in my wallet. I have a money clip. <laughs> oh, um, my gosh. Yeah, so uh, there you go. Oh, Beatmaster was, was kidding. It was Kickstarter. Um, so there you go. Uh, the, my, my gadget warehouse. With that, let's move on to the letter. And our letter is an email uh, to me and to all of his fans. Do you know Johnny Jet? You know who he is, yeah, right? Johnny Jet, the yeah. travel, the travel the, guy on uh, yeah. the tech guy. Yes, exactly. And he obviously precedes his own me. blog and everything. Like he, that. Yes, exactly. Um, he precedes me on uh, Tech Guy Labs on Saturdays. Anyway, he sent an out email today, and this is such a funny thing. So, the headline is why, and see if you can come up with a guess. Okay. Why? should you bring a mini plunger with you when you travel? Okay. Now my answer was because the hotel toilet might back up right. and instead of waiting for the plumber, you know, or embarrassment of saying, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It might, it might um, be a little smelly in there. <laughs> yeah. You just yeah, bring your yeah, own plunger. Yeah. Uh, you have any other uh, thought about that? Um, yeah, I mean, that was, that's definitely, you know, avoiding embarrassment would be why I would bring my own plunger. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any, <laughs> any other, like maybe you would use it for your luggage to take all the air out or something. Like maybe there's some other use for a plunger, but no, that's all right. Well, this is, it. this is quite amazing. So this is the rest of the email. So Johnny Jet overheard this at an airport. A guy was saying he saw a lady on a train pull out a mini plunger and stick it to the ceiling because the train was so crowded, <laughs> she couldn't get to anything to hold on to. And she had thought ahead to bring the plunger. <laughs> yes. And Johnny Jet said, this is not a bad idea if you're afraid that the, you can't hold on to something or you're afraid that everything is germ covered. He said, the only thing is, Get ready for people to be taking selfies and yeah. for people to be laughing a lot. But if you have but, a germ phobia, I think that's a lot better than actually touching one of the handles inside of a subway car. Yes, yes, right. But make sure you go around with a clean plunger. I mean, right. uh, you, would, you, would, you would sterilize your plunger. I, yeah, you would yeah. never use it in a toilet. No, no. Yeah. This, is, this is one of those things that you think, that's a great idea, but I would not do this in a million right. years. But like I clever. will just ah clever fall, you know fall humans are just clever animals that's and, isn't that clever wow yeah. and so here it is it's what's funny yeah. is yeah I thought that said Minecraft at the beginning <laughs> <laughs> so dyslexia was like a Minecraft plunger oh my well, gosh now you have now you have something to design yeah the Mintcraft uh, it's a mini four inch plunger I think it's like uh, thirteen inches long. Um, to make your own, you know what, uh, you know, if, if you're afraid you're going to fall in the tub, you could put one of these, there you uh, go. have something to grab onto. Uh, just, uh, on like, the... what, what could you plunge that's four inches? This is a plunger for oh, a well, urinal. Uh, um, <laughs> I no, miss. I think it's mainly, uh, for train holding. Wow. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, anyway, I just broke me up is how, how ingenious is that? And, and how weird is that? Very weird. So, yeah. Yeah. And I wonder what security says oh, after, after, oh, after about a year, they go, Oh, I know. Okay. Is this what your airplane handle? I'm sorry, ma'am, but is this in your four ounces of liquids that you're allowed to, Oh, I guess it's just a plunger. No but big you, deal. You know what? It just dawned on me. If you're, if your uh, suitcase handle broke, you could tow your luggage with a plunger. Right. You'd have to have some of that, uh, you know, like aluminum siding luggage that's like flat. You know, you would yes, stick yes, to it. Yeah. yeah, that's right. That's oh my right. gosh. Right. Uh, there's a lot of reviews on this, uh, in fact. And my, my favorite review might be the TARDIS uh, that was made using this <laughs> plunger. Uh, it's perfect. It's oh, just that is a right. perfect that little is, plunger. There you go. There you go. Wow. Uh, Johnny Jet, thanks for the email. It's very funny. <laughs> that is very funny. Um, wow. Okay. Thank you so much for your email. By the way, uh, I want to remind you guys to send in your videos for the Gadget Warehouse. It could be any gadget at all. It doesn't, you know, it could be your favorite gadget. It could be your least favorite gadget. We love those. Old gadgets are our favorite, but really any gadget that you think is unique that you need to share with a Gizwiz audience, please record a video. Uh, keep it around under three minutes would be fantastic. Make sure it's horizontal, not portrait. That would be fantastic. And then email it to us, mail at gizwiz.tv. Yeah, just uh, email us the link. And then if you're in the U.S. and we show it, we're showing 99% of everything that comes in. Uh, you'll get uh, the current Mad Magazine and one of those 35-year-old Alfred E. Newman pictures. You're going to send me and one? Thanks. No, just, I don't need one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I did, oh, I I did a get to warehouse, Dick. I deserve a... a no, I'm Wait just a minute. Didn't I give it... Aren't you still no, getting man? Yes, I do. I yeah, do. I, I do. I, I'm just kidding with you. Um, yeah, fantastic. So please uh, send in those, send in those videos. <laughs> um, also, big, big, big thank you to our patrons, patreon.com slash gizwiz. You guys support our show every single episode. Thank you so, so, so much from the bottom of our heart. If you enjoy the gizwiz and want to give back just a little bit, head on over to patreon.com slash gizwiz, and you can sign up. Uh, to support us every episode, small amount, you know, we don't, we're not begging for a lot, you know, just a small, tiny amount every single episode, we would appreciate it so, 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 so much. If Patreon's not your jam and you want to give a one-time donation, gizwiz.tv, click on the Patreon ta uh, tab, uh, the page, and there's a, a PayPal link there. Uh, also, get on over to gizwiz.biz and play What the Heck Is It? Uh, this is the game show that you can participate in with real prizes from Dickie D <laughs> himself. All you have to do is head on over to gizwiz.biz, click what the heck is it on the sidebar, and here it is. This is the gadget. The whole gadget. And nothing but the gadget. Um, this is actually a professional piece of equipment uh, for exposing and for developing 360 degree film. That's right. Uh, you just wow. put your film in there, and it's just a big panoramic, uh, you know, bed just for all that 360 film. If you think you yeah. know what this is, get a guessin' over at gizwiz.biz. There's six Mad Magazines for correct answers, 12 Mad Magazines, double the Mad Magazines for hilarious, clever, interesting, and creative answers. So get a guessin' over at gizwiz.biz. Our sister site, gizwiz.biz. TV, like television, like the show, is where we host the podcast, so you can go there to check all of our previous episodes, uh, you know, independent episodes. We don't have 6,000, 1,600 episodes on the Gizwiz.tv, but you can check all of our previous episodes and also catch us live. We should be live every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern time, uh, except for next week when we are off. But after that, we're, we have tons of Thursdays uh, after that. Tons so. of Thursdays. Tons of them. So we'd love to have you live and for you to join the chat room. Thanks so, so, so much for watching this episode of The Gizwiz. We'll see you next week. I'll be here. <laughs>